In a world where many people see reality as a circle or a rectangle, the truth is that issues are cylinders. Rather than a two-dimensional understanding, we will flush out the three-dimension complexities through nuanced conversation and civil, respectable discourse to highlight all perspectives on controversial issues. I'm your host, William Roosh, a high school teacher who's trying to transform education as we know it. Welcome to the Anti-Echo Chamber. This is Cylinder Radio. Hello and welcome to the next installment of Cylinder Radio. Today we are going to take a step back from some of the controversial issues and uh, do something a little bit different. Where today's episode is, where I'm going to be discussing the call to adventure and this idea of going out and, and going on adventures in your life. And my guest today is Sam Holmes. Sam Holmes from Sam Holmes Sailing. This is a YouTube channel on Instagram and samholmesailing.com. Sam, thank you so much for coming on this podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm glad to do this. Yeah, so I just told you um, before we started recording that basically how you ended up here is, this is something that's really cool about having a podcast that has some viewership, is I came across your YouTube channel and there was a video of you leaving California and you're off to Hawaii and you sailed to Hawaii by yourself uh, in a 23 foot sailboat and you documented the whole process going through storms and and the whole thing and then you arriving in Hawaii in the in the marina and I was just like glued to it I was like this is awesome this is so unique I want to talk to this dude and I just like reached out to you and you were like receptive to it so so that's how we're here sure yeah it was an amazing trip (laughs) Yeah, so it's tell exciting us a little bit been, about uh, was that inspire other people. It's, it's really really exciting to me that like other people are interested interested in it too, like on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, it's just it's just so YouTube. different. It's different than 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 the usual lie the lives that we live. We're living in such comfort. It's 2019. Like mm-hmm. we don't need to go on adventures. So you know, a lot of people don't. So tell us a little bit about like what you do. And if, if we're going to be talking about going on adventures, like you're an adventurous guy, tell us a little bit about, you know, that trip, but also just other things that you do that you think would fall in the category of, you know, a call to adventure. Mm. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, that was like my longest sailing trip I'd done uh, up until that point. But I'd been sailing you know, like around Southern California, like, you know, week long weekend trips, a lot of day sailing, you know, a few years before that. And I'm also, I do a lot of kind of paragliding um, and uh, uh, backpacking trips. And like with a paragliding, you can really take that, you know, in the mountains and go cross country. I've done some competitions down in Mexico. Um, and, and then, you know, backpacking. It's this cool thing is you can kind of combine these with the sailing adventures too. So I get to that new island and I take, you know, the backpacking and go for a couple of days in the, in the wilderness or, and then try to fly off the mountains on the islands. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I'm into. Um, this is, this is unusual, right? I mean, did you grow up in this kind of environment where you were outdoors a lot and you were taking these kinds of like different paths? Like, did you grow up around this? Is this kind of something that you've always been into? No, a little bit. I mean, I've been kind of into more like, you know, extreme sports, I guess, like, like the skateboard and, um, mountain bike when I was younger. Um, yeah, so yeah, I was kind of into that. I, the, the kind of outdoorsy stuff, maybe not as much until later. Um, like I got a friend a few years ago that got me into backpacking. And um, I mean, that kind of like, I, that, I, that was really important, I think, for me to continue my sailing in the direction I, I went with it, right? Because, I mean, you can get kind of fancy boats, you know, that have all your amenities of home. But like, to be able to afford something like that, it's not so realistic until you, you know, if, you know done pretty well. Uh, but the, the th- cool thing about just doing a sailing trip on, with the kind of backpacking mentality is you can just go buy a boat for a couple of thousand dollars and you can outfit it really simply and be ready to go, you know, within a few months. Or, I mean, I guess I spent a year uh, getting my boat ready to go. But it's still it's a much shorter time span than if you want, you know, the um, all the electronics and, you know, air conditioning and, you know, comfort at home, uh, which isn't really necessary. I feel like uh, kind of doing it more minimalistically, uh, you're kind of more in touch with, you know, nature and the ocean and everything. It's, it's very satisfying. 
Yeah, and backpacking is something, and I've done some camping. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, nothing as extreme as you, but I've done a couple of trips where we go out and not really bring a lot of food, so we have to catch fish if we want to eat and things like that. And yeah, part cool. of what backpacking is 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 you it's it's minimalist is is you know you you lose those those creature comforts that we become so used to in society and when you lose that you realize that you don't need it and and i think that that's something really important when we you know i talk about this all the time in this podcast so the regular listeners are sick of it but um you know just the 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 p- biggest problems that we have naval ravikant was saying something like they're problems of excess you know the mm-hmm. problems of you know, whether it's obesity or, 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 you know, too much, too much comfort where we don't have, we don't struggle. So our, our minds, uh, you know, form, you know, depression and stuff like that. There's all these different things going on. Opiate overdoses, depression, suicides, like all these things I think are linked to the, the lack of struggle in some way. And so, you know, your body rejects that because we need struggle. We evolved to have struggle. And when you just put everything on your back, it's like, well, I have to struggle now because it's not going to be comfortable. You know, we're used to yeah. warm showers and we're used to air conditioning. We're used to all like the, our clothes have a little bit of a tag on it. It just bothers us. And like, like little things like that, you, you, we just become soft. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I was really roughing it out there. And like when I, I'm taking a short break from the sailing life to just four months to um, do a quick contract job before I go back out to sea. And I've just been living in hotel rooms with my nice, comfortable bed and hot showers. And, you know, the first couple of days, it was amazing, you know, but like pretty shortly after that, you just get accustomed to it. Yeah. And you, I don't know, you get a little bit you know, complacent and I don't know, maybe even like lazier if I don't have to like, oh, I don't know, if you're just, if you have everything so easy and comfortable, um, you're not, I don't know, it's not, it's not, you don't feel like, I'm not, don't feel have the same feeling of living like to my fullest as when I was just at anchor and living so simply, even if though it was, you know, hot and uncomfortable and, salty but uh there's there's definitely some appeal to like being living that way yeah i mean the the you know the the best the best shower you get is after you've been really filthy right i mean you Mm -hmm. we we lack so much gratitude a quote that i really love and i say it often neil donald walsh quote which is the struggle ends when gratitude begins and you know because we're so comfortable here i just feel like we don't have gratitude for for how good situations are so we find problems because we need problems and we need that. So, you know, just having gratitude for, for ice in your glass, you know, where, which is so just, just, you know, I, I accepted and just so, you know, expected to, um, you know, that comes from, from withdrawing from that a little bit. So you actually quit your job to be, to go on these sailing trips and things like that. You, you kind of rejected the, yeah. the traditional route. Yeah, it was kind of scary to do that because um, I had a pretty all right, pretty good job. I just wasn't very happy with it though, so yeah. I knew I kind of needed to leave. But uh, I don't know. I was wondering if like the trip was going to be worth it, like what it would mean to do this. Like maybe I would just I don't know, I'm done with this. I'm ready to go back to work or something, or or if like I wanted to you know keep going further. Um, and then the end, it turned out to be totally worth it. It was definitely the right move. I've just been so much happier, you know, not not having to go to work and. I mean, I'm happy to live off less money uh, if I can, you know, just you know, be happy with what I'm doing. Well, that's, I mean, that's what it takes. I have a sign that's behind me in all these podcasts. It says dragons hoard gold. This idea that the th- gold being the thing you want most, dragons being the thing you fear most. You know, yeah. the things that you want are just beyond your fear. And it's pretty scary to, to right. give up a comfortable and, life. Well, the other thing is like health insurance and stuff. That was like always scary for me because I mean, I had like, you know, serious health problems in the past and like you having to buy my own health care is yeah. uh, that was kind of a scary thing but you know once i you know did the research and found out how you could get it it's it's it's, re- it's doable you know it sucks how expensive it is but like it's it's a small thing and like looking back on it i don't know I'm, I'm kind of like why was it such a big deal in the like in the past but um yeah so that was one of the things i had to kind of like work through uh but yeah i think it's just like a fear of the unknown and like mm-hmm. now that i've done it it's like it's not so scary anymore like it's not that big of a deal you just kind of have to take that that jump yeah, I mean, people are stuck in jobs probably like you were. They don't like it, but, you know, you take the devil you know over the devil you don't. So they exactly. stay in it. I, just, I, I think I stayed in the job for way too long. And it's funny thing is now I came back and I've just, and like, I've like kind of reevaluated my priorities. And it's just like, I'm just going to do this four month job. And I'm, I'm much happier at work now just because I've kind of like, no, I'm working towards something I want right. to do. Well, I had a friend who was like, oh man, I really hate my job. But, you know, if, if I, 
it, it's a, I'm going to keep it because I can retire early. I was like, well, what's early? He's like, well, like 55. It's like, you're 32. It's a long time ago. <laughs> like, yeah. You're, like that's a, that's a long time. You're talking about like another 23 years, mm-hmm. <laughs> like 23 years sticking with us. And you can finally live a life you want. It's just, it's nuts. But you know, the reason why I think it's so important to do a podcast on this for all people, but especially young people figuring things out or people who are unhappy in their situation is you can change it. You can, you can go on your life's adventure. Look, every good movie or great story has an adventure in it. Okay. That is what the story is. So if your life is a story, you know, what kind of story is it? What is the adventure that you're going on? And the call to your life's adventure is, is the, the, maybe like the point of being here. I mean, we all need to go on our life's adventure, you know, whether, you know, Lord of the Rings, go throw the ring into the volcano. I didn't see the whole thing, but uh, essentially whatever, whatever it is, there's a, there's a, a, an adventure you need to go on in your life. And if you don't have that to like, to, to do that kind of purpose, you, your, you, your body might reject it. Your mind might reject it in some way. And it's just something to consider a little bit. Um, yeah. That it is an option. You can do it. And bringing on people like you, Sam, like is just proof that like you can do it. It is possible. Yeah. And I'm obviously like sailing and stuff is dangerous. There's risk involved, but like you could get hit by a car or have a car accident or just get some health issue. There's so many ways, you know, you could end up dying. And I just wanted to, I mean, I had like some health issues and had my colon removed. It kind of made me think a little bit more about maybe I should do these things sooner than later because I mean, I could always go back to work, you know, like, you might, I mean, yeah. you might have, you know, do it now. Like why, why really wait? You know, what's really kind of stopping you? And I'm you just got a little, of, you just got a little quiet. Can you move a little closer to your mic? I was just kind of thinking that okay. it's, um, I might as well just kind of do it now. And that's just like a kind of like a, uh, or kind of a, like something that happened to kind of make me take that like, next yeah. step. Forward. Rather than just kind of planning about it, but actually kind of doing it. Cause so many people say, tell me, you know, in their comments, they were inspired by sailing. They're going to start taking sailing lessons or they want to do a similar trip. But and the same thing with paragliding, but like most people don't actually, actually, you know, make the, take the steps to go do it. You know, it's one yeah. thing to kind of have that idea or be inspired or have a, you know, a dream to do something. It's another thing to actually just go and do it. I think that's really important, you know, to set something up for yourself where you're actually going to do it, you know, not just kind of talk about it. Right. Well, you know, sailing and, and things like that, you know, it does take skill. Like there's a, there's skill that you have to develop over a lot of hours to be able to do it. So it does take, you know, a sense of, you know, delayed gratification yeah, but and things it's like just that. Just one step at a time, you know, yeah. like what's the next step you need to do. You need to learn how to sail. If you don't know how to sail, you need to get a boat, you know, and you can break it down into small pieces and it's, it's very doable. Yeah. And it gives you like something to look forward to, you know, getting better at something. I have mm-hmm. my students right now working on a project where, it's called the process project. And basically what they have to do is they have to pick something that they're bad at and then document it throughout the whole semester of them improving. And it has to be measurable mm-hmm. and things like that. And at the end of the semester, they have to present a five minute YouTube video of their process of being bad at something and getting better at something. Well, that's something I, I really enjoy is the process. Like yeah, I, right. I, I got pretty good at paragliding so I could fly you know, pretty reasonably well. And then I was like, well, this, this is okay. But I kind of lost my pet, like kind of as much passion for it. Um, so I said, I just started hang gliding cause it was something new and different. And I was sucked at hang gliding, but you know, I did it for a while and then I could fly hang gliders. I never got excellent at hang gliders, but then I was like, well, what do I want to do next? So I started flying sailplanes, you know, it's like learning something new is almost more fun than getting, you know, really good. At, the journey, you know, right? Done. Yeah. yeah that's definitely part of the fun. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and getting better at something, especially when you're, when you're terrible at something, the learning curve is so big. Like you, you get noticeably better. Like quicker mm-hmm. when you're really good at something, you know, I had on, um, Matt Thornton, a couple of episodes ago, who's a fourth degree black belt in jujitsu. And like, when you're a black belt in jujitsu, it's minuscule. The, the, the improvements are so small. They're so slight, but when you're yeah. a, a white belt, it's just like, you're, I mean, you're getting much better than you were a month ago. Sure. And it's and like, that, like I think with most things. Like really mastering something. And that's cool too. But like, yeah. on the other hand, I think one of the things that was kind of neat about my sailing trip and maybe why a lot of people responded to my video, well, when there's so many other people doing like so much more difficult, like big ocean sailing stuff, like, and they have way less views and subscribers. Um, it's just because, I mean, those people are experts, you know, they like, you know, paid their dues and they work way, you know, way through it and they just, know, they, 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 I don't know. It's just not, I feel like the thing, the way I did it was more, 
I'm just kind of like a regular guy. And I'm not, obviously, I know a little bit about sailing, but a yeah. lot, it's all kind of new for me, too. And you get to watch me, like, and make mistakes and right. just kind of figure it out as I go along. And I don't know, I think that was, that's kind of the way I wanted it to, to, to I, I didn't want to just keep going, you know, on more coastal trips. I wanted to actually do something bigger that would really challenge me. And that's why I picked to sail to Hawaii. Yeah, people love that. I have a friend who, um, shout out to David Ha, who's a, um, a, a personal trainer. And he was walking on his hands. He's like, I'm not getting a lot of views with me, you know, walking on my hands and doing stairs and push-ups on my, walking on my hands. I was like, people don't relate to that. But mm -hmm. where are all the videos of you learning how to walk on your hands and falling on your butt? He's like, oh man, I had hours of those. I deleted them all. It's like, that was a mistake. That's what people want to watch. They want to watch the process because it's mm -hmm. relatable. Then they don't feel bad about trying things. And, and a big point of me doing this podcast is to just give a little nudge to try something new, to go out on that adventure and risk failing and things like that. When you were sailing, what was like the, the most like hairy moment? The, was there a moment like when you were in the middle of the Pacific where you're like, whoa? Oh, I mean, there was that, lots of moments like that. I mean, it wasn't the, the, the overwhelming, you know, feeling on the trip, but it was actually kind of near the beginning was kind of the worst of it, where it was just the weather was, was kind of left in kind of a weird weather system. And I was going up wind more than I should have been. And I don't know, it's just near the beginning of the trip. And I just was thinking about like, I had, had so much more to look for, you know, so much for, farther to go. And it was just going so slowly, just kind of beating into waves. And it was at nighttime and there was all these noises that I quite hadn't quite heard before. I was taking on a lot of water and I just was like, I'm, you know, um, 50 miles off of shore and this is like already this bad. Like, what, who am I to think I could even do this? <laughs> and I ultimately decided to keep on going just because I was going so slow and if something did go wrong, I wasn't very far away. And uh, there was some point where it was just like, was, everything was kind of building up and I couldn't get my heart right down. It was just kind of like my whole body. Hold on, I lost you. I can't hear you. Okay. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Yeah, so I got to the point where just I couldn't get my heart rate down. I just was, felt so anxious and I, I needed to do something. And what ultimately happened was I just had a different kind of a change in mindset. I'm not sure like, what triggered it, but I was just trying to worry about everything and like figure out what every single noise was and everything that was going on and like every single little, you know, point of water entry which I mean is important to know but like at a certain point I mean you have to just kind of rely on the preparation you did and kind of your experience and to get you through because you don't have control of everything and I kind of just told myself you know if what happens is going to happen and I can't control everything and if I do end up you know getting rescued or something I mean that'll happen I don't think it's very likely but I just kind of stopped worrying on it about it and just like kind of let myself go along for the ride for a little bit and I mean <laughs> It, for something, something to happen, it just kind of like switched in me. And I, all of a sudden I just calmed down. And I was just like, you know, is, whatever happens, it's going to be a good story. I, I don't think I'm going to die out here. Um, and I don't know, just like, I just like was able to calm down and keep on going. And it kind of got past that fear. And it never got that bad again after, you know, the second day. I really just started enjoying it a lot more. So you were confident that if something went wrong, you would be rescued? You wouldn't be like stranded out in the middle of the ocean? Well, the rescue was like never really... Um, uh, it was like a way, way down there on the... No, but I'm saying if something like, really bad I, happened... I was really prepared to get myself home or drift for days, you know. I had a, a spare, like, mask, the windsurfer mask, and a way to rig up a jury rig and, like, ways to, you know, fix leaks and stuff. And I was, yeah, so I really didn't want to be rescued, and I thought I was pretty prepared. Um, but I think there was a pretty good chance of being rescued eventually, you know. And, I mean, you were not too far out of shipping lanes. I did have an EPRIV and a DeLorme inReach, so I could communicate with you know, the Coast Guard and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they could have, it, it, it's not unusual for them to divert a, uh, you know, a cargo ship or something to pick up a, uh, a yacht in distress. Um, but yeah, I really didn't want that to happen. And I, right, would, I was going to do everything in my means to get myself back if I needed to. And I felt pretty confident I could do that. But yeah, there's like options to get rescued. I didn't have a lifeboat, but I did have a uh, emergen suit. So like I kind of fend off hypothermia for maybe a day or two. Um, I mean, the world waters definitely got warmer as you got towards Hawaii, and maybe it wasn't a huge risk, but it was good to have. Um, it, it would be nice to have a life raft, but I just didn't have the room on my boat. What um, what was it like in the middle of the Pacific, like at night? Was it just was it peaceful? Did you did you? I mean, with the, the I'm sure the stars were incredible. Was it? Did yeah. you see anything like whales? Like, just bring, can you bring us into like what is it like in the middle of the Pacific Ocean by yourself at night? It, it's so dark it feels like you're in outer space and when the stars are out which isn't every night um 
it's just like you look out the companion way and it's all you just see is, is you know stars and there's like nothing else it's like you're looking out like the hatch of a spaceship basically oh, yeah. and uh yeah some nights you can just see the whole milky way you know satellites the space station um it's it's pretty amazing um and then you know sometimes it's you get a little bit of everything you have these calm days where it's just no wind it's kind of frustrating you're not even going anywhere but you can go for a swim and then on the other days, it's just like you just want to stay inside because you're just getting, you know, blasted by um, spray and it's just way too windy. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was kind of what I was expecting. So, uh, yeah, it's a, little, a lot of variety over 27 days. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Did you see any cool, like any um, wildlife out there? Um, I saw lots of birds, you know, there's a big boobies and uh, then there's smaller birds too. Um, and then dolphins, like one or two days. Um, and I never saw any whales, but I saw lots of flying fish, like, oh. uh, especially closer towards Hawaii, there would just be a ton of them. And you would hear just like the, this like pounding on the hall. I couldn't figure out what it was. They're running your was, boat. It didn't sound like weird. They're just running into, you're just running into flying fish at night a lot of times. Oh, and wow. then I'd, I'd pick the, you know, the dead flying fish off the boat in the morning. One day I had 15 flying fish I had to pick off the boat and wow. you could cook them up for the bigger ones. Usually they're pretty small though. Um, but it was interesting because there's like pockets of life. I think it's like maybe upwelling. So you have, you know, algae and uh, bioluminescence. Mm. And then that would be the areas where you'd see, you know, flying fish and dolphins and birds, you know, all kind of in one area. And then there's other areas that were just mostly lifeless. You know, you wouldn't see any, any, any birds or fish or anything. Mm. Um, so it's kind of interesting, like, to see, you know, how the ocean works like that. Um, so just getting back to, like, I guess the – the reason why people don't go on adventures and stuff like that, I think there's a lot of reasons. Um, Walton Jordan is a, a, a friend of mine. He's a stand-up comedian. He's great. He has a joke, something like that. He's um, a black dude. And he said, uh, he's like, camping is such a white person thing. He's like, only white people pretend to be poor for fun. <laughs> that was really funny. And it's like, like, why? I guess, like, the reason why people don't, choose to be uncomfortable or choose to do hard things is because they don't. So what would be like, obviously you're not, I'm not pushing anyone to do anything that they don't want to do. But if you had to be like a salesman, um, not for sailing or, or anything or, or paragliding or anything like that, but just for doing more adventurous stuff to getting out of your comfort zone, what would be like your pitch? to people to do whatever it is their version of adventure would be. Mm. I don't know. I usually don't try to encourage people to do these kind of sailing or paragliding just because it's like something if, if that's not, if right. you so want to do Maybe not that. Maybe not, like I said, like maybe not sailing or paragliding or anything, but whatever it, their yeah. definition of like the thing that they've always wanted to do, but they just didn't mm. think that they would be able to, or they, they don't have like the courage to, to give up the comfort that they have, you know, the, the job that they have or the situation where all their friends are kind of all following the same pathway to break off, to quit their job. Not, I'm not, and we're not advocating that you do quit your job, but I just think that there is something important to let them know that like what, to really just like let them know what that decision kind of looks like. They're going to make their own decisions, whether or not this, this podcast is not going to get people to not to make decisions that they wouldn't normally make. But I think it's important. The reason I wanted to do this is I think it's important to let them know sincerely what that perspective is. So going back to the cylinder, okay, we know what, what the, the traditional path, the American path looks like, you know, what school, college, get a job, you know, in a cubicle somewhere or, or in retail or something like that. And then work, work your way up the management ladder a little bit, eventually maybe get a place and then you get your a car and you, you do this and you start the family and you watch a lot of Netflix or whatever it is. Okay, we know that. But just what is the honest other side? Like the life that you're living, what's a, how would you describe that just in an honest way so people can understand it? I don't know. I mean, I feel like I live in a lot more full when I'm fully when I'm out there and I don't know, I'd say. I mean, I guess just whatever makes you happy. I feel happier now. Maybe I didn't realize I wasn't as happy until I I got here and those that started looking back on you know, my life. Like I, I'm smiling a lot more. I don't know. I, did, I kind of like it's kind of one of those things. I once I did it, I was like, oh man, I I'm really glad I did that. I wasn't really as happy. <laughs> I, you don't I knew miss, you don't the, miss the 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 stability. Mm, 
not not so much as I thought I would, but yeah, yeah. definitely not really. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I guess, I guess, um, I guess what, I, what I want to try and, and just spark thought into people is if you could, if you could go anywhere or take part in some sort of adventure, what would that adventure be? What would it be for you specifically, the, whoever's listening to this? And then really make a list, like a positives and negatives list of like, what would be the positives of doing this and what would be the negatives? And really mm -hmm. think about it. And if you don't want to do it, cool, no problem. But if you do want to do it, I think it's important to know that you can, that it is an option and you can do it. And like, like you said, at any point now you develop skills like even before you did this sailing thing that you can go back and get a job. If you wanted to get back and what, what kind of um, industry were you in? Oh, I, I work for Disney Imagineering uh, theme park design. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. So like at any point you could, you know, pick up a contract to do that or get a job doing that. You know? So, so I think for a lot of us, we think that, you know, yeah, this I, didn't, job, I didn't think I would, but then they called me back because there's not that many, you know, yeah. theme park design places. Right. But ended up working in the same place or so they, they ended up you know i realized that my kind of my skills are more valuable than i thought yeah them. but i think a lot of people it doesn't you don't have to have something really niche like that i think that there's a you know whatever skills well you i have, thought that that's, major that's was. what i thought was a, a downside you know because it's not as many uses yeah. for it but it turned out to be fine and i think uh, yeah there's lots of skills that you can use in lots of places and it's not yeah i mean i with i figured i'd I have a lot of talents, you know, and other things. And I figured I could even do you know, charter, charter sailboats or deliveries or, you know, that kind of thing down the line or just teaching lessons. There's lots of options. Um, especially once you get out doing something you love. Cause like the thing is like, once you start doing these like bigger adventures, whatever it is, um, you, other people want to do it too. Right. And then so you, there's ways to make money. Although, although kind of my kind of, when I did sail between all the islands, I was just really not trying to, think about work you know or money or like ways to kind of commercialize it i think that was kind of a more pure way to do it and i think it kind of led to more you know interesting connections and stuff that popped up along the way um, just because i was like you know just i've saved up some money and just like not going to even think about you know work right now um and that, that was a pretty enjoyable few months i'm sure um so yeah so just in closing you know i to the mm -hmm. audience out there you know developing skills is always going to be good when people are like, I don't know what my passion is. Everyone, you know, my teachers are telling me to follow my passion. I've talked to 50 year olds who are like, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. It's like, look, start working, start developing skills and whatever skills you enjoy doing, you enjoy failing at, you enjoy the process of that's your passion. Things that you are willing to work really hard at and you can't wait to work really hard at, that's your passion. So try to develop skills that you're passionate about and think about what is your adventure? What is gonna be your life adventure? If your life is a book, your life is a, is a movie, like what is the main adventure? And that can be just working a nine to five and raising a family. That is there's nothing wrong with that, that is awesome. I'm not doing a whole lot of adventurous stuff right now, okay? But I think it's important just to, to, to think about it. Use your imagination, think about what your life adventure is gonna be, and then pursue that. Because for all I know, as much as I know, we, we get one shot at this, we get one crack. So let's, let's live a full life. Let's, let's live it to the, to the way that you truly want to. And if you do that, then, then, you know, I think that the, just the, the positive um, ripple effects will just be, will be tremendous in your life. And a lot of people are struggling right now. So, you know, it's just, I, I wanted to give another perspective to people out there of, of things that are possible. Uh, I talked to a, a former student of mine actually yesterday who was saying he, he was like in his mid twenties, but before he realized that you can just go to the airport and buy a plane ticket to anywhere in the world and just go like pretty much. I don't know if you can go to like Syria, but like, you know, you can just, you can just jump on a plane and go places. And you know, if you get used to backpacking and things like that, you, you're used to getting rid of some of the creature comforts for a little bit and you can it freeze you up to do a lot of things that you might want to do. Um, so just in closing, Sam, is there anything that, um, that you want to, you know, share or, 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 uh, if people want to check out, you know, your, your videos and things like that, where can they find you? Oh yeah. So I have a YouTube channel. Um, 
and Facebook. It's all Sam Holmes Sailing. Oh, Instagram too. So those are like the social media accounts. I'm, I'm working on learning how to use all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I just signed up for Instagram. Uh, it's pretty cool though. Like I had kind of thought some of the social media was, I don't know, it's kind of something I wanted to avoid for a long time. But uh, they seem kind of toxic in some ways too. But it is. I found at least like the sailing community and the you know the videos I've shared have been the sponsors are really positive. Like I've had very few negative comments. Uh, I was for a while I kind of got on the algorithm there and it kind of like got some weird, um, I don't know, weird reactions from it. But uh, yeah, for the most part, I like, yeah, um, enjoyed sharing that. So yeah, so the Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, yeah, that's about it. I have a website yeah. too, samhomesailing.com. So that's pretty good because it's got the links to all the, all right. the other ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I went on so I went on Instagram actually because it's the one, it's the platform that has the most young people and teachers, and those are kind of the people that I'm trying to hit, like educators and then young people. Young people don't use Twitter or Facebook, which teachers do, and then um, teachers don't use Snapchat. So it's like there's a lot of overlap, but yeah, it's it's oh, mostly yeah. stuff that I that I am frustrated with on on Instagram, and then every once in a while you catch cool stuff, and I'm trying to be a little bit more positive. You know, presenting other things out there than than you know people in their Lamborghinis doing burnouts around throwing money. Yeah, in air. I try not to waste time like looking at the just try, but I need to post my own content on it. Yeah, um, yeah, you get yeah, it's you, you get you make new connections and like. Uh, well, I think you contacted me through what was it? Uh, was it Instagram? It might have been Instagram. That's like the main platform I use, so it might have been yeah. Yeah, so, so it's hard, kind of hard to manage them all because there's so many. Yeah. I don't even have the Snapchat. I guess maybe I should add that one too. Um, but you can. Um, it's young. It's young people. You can, you can make money through them too. Mm-hmm. Like I had to turn on the ad revenue on YouTube, yeah. and I thought it was just like you know pennies, like it wasn't very much at all. But actually, it's it's pretty good. Like, um, definitely not like as much as I was making it like a nine to five job. Right. But if you're just sailing or you know backpacking around the country or something, you know doing these kind of dirtbag adventures. Um, it's an, it's enough to make a difference. And I think there's a lot of people who are willing to kind of pitch in like the Patreon. I have that account too. Oh, okay. um, they kind of see someone, you know, living, uh, they want to live vicariously through the adventures. Um, they're willing to contribute, which is really cool. Yeah. Technology allows that, you know, allows us to, to really connect in cool ways. So Sam, thank you so much for, for being on here. And uh, I ho- I urge you know people to go check out some of these videos because it's really cool. And yeah, it is kind of like living vicariously. It's just like, oh, what would it be like to do these kinds of cool things? You can kind of see it. And maybe it'll spark something in you to go on some very small scale adventures, start small, but maybe things that you can do in your life to to you know switch it up a little bit and 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 add some some your version of thrills in your life to to live a little bit more full if that's what sure. something that you're into. Yeah. And if anybody wants to like reach out, has any comments or anything, I, I try to respond on all the, the platforms. So feel free to. Cool. All right, Sam. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. This has been Cylinder Radio. The success of this podcast and the educational revolution that I hope you will be a part of is dependent on those who find value in it. Please take a few moments to review us on iTunes so the show is more easily found. If there was a perspective on today's topic that was not highlighted in this episode, or you have an idea for an episode topic that you want to understand more deeply, please email us at cylinderradio at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram at Will Roosh, W-I-L-L-R-E-U-S-C-H. Thank you for your support and I look forward to the next one.